In our everyday life, we mostly focus on what we see in front of us. However, have you ever looked into a clear night sky and been amazed at the number of stars you can see? Have you ever wondered if there are planets like ours orbiting those stars? Have you even wondered if there was life on those planets staring back at you? Until 1995, we didn't know the answer to any of these questions because the only planets we knew about were the eight in our own solar system. Because of this, any models we made about planetary formation were based on our solar system, which influenced our expectations for other systems. For example, all of the orbits are nearly circular and also lie nearly in the same plane. Because of this, astronomers concluded that the eight planets formed out of a disk of leftover material from when the Sun formed. In addition, we have four rocky planets closest to the Sun and then four gas giants further out. Therefore, they thought that giant planets could only form in the outer regions of the disk. In the past 25 years, astronomers have discovered many planets outside of our solar system, known as exoplanets. This has enabled research into whether our system's properties are common to other planetary systems. On Earth, we can see some of our neighbor planets because they reflect some of the sun's light back to us. Most importantly, the planets appear far away from the sun, so we can avoid the sun's glare. Looking for exoplanets is much harder, because the host stars are very distant, so their planets appear extremely close to their stars. The stars' light totally swamp out any reflected light from the planets. As an analogy, imagine if a group of a million floodlights represented a star and a firefly represented a planet. When the firefly is close to the floodlights, it becomes nearly impossible to distinguish it from the floodlights, and we will only see one apparent light source. In addition, these stars are many light years away, so it is exceedingly rare to be able to directly observe exoplanets due to these effects. Therefore, we must indirectly observe them, meaning that astronomers observe the planet's effects instead of the planet itself. One indirect way astronomers can detect a planet is by studying how it causes its host star to move. Consider what happens when two stars orbit each other. The stars exert a gravitational pull on each other, and they will move around a point in between them. However, the larger one star is compared to the other, the less it will move. This is like a seesaw on the playground. A heavier person must sit closer in to balance a lighter person on the other side, and when they move, the heavier person moves less than the lighter one. The motion of the star also affects the light it produces. This is called the Doppler effect. You might be familiar with this effect when it comes to sound. For example, think of the sirens on an ambulance. When the ambulance is approaching you, the pitch is higher, and when it moves away, the pitch is lower. Light behaves in a very similar way, but its color changes instead. Look at the star moving across the screen. When the star moves towards you, you will see a color bluer than the original color, and when it moves away, it gets redder. In this animation, we have exaggerated the color change for effect. Let's watch the system from the side. From here, we see the star getting closer, then farther away, then closer again. The star's back and forth motion causes the observed color of the star to change periodically due to the Doppler effect. Astronomers can measure how much the star changes color, and then calculate how fast it is moving. They can then determine how big of an object is orbiting the star. Planets can also cause a star to wobble, but because it's so much lighter than its star, the wobble is very small. For someone observing our own solar system edge on, Jupiter causes the Sun to move back and forth with the speed of an Olympic sprinter, but Earth causes it to move at a baby's crawl. Even though Jupiter is further away, it is much more massive than Earth, which is why its effect is stronger. Up until 1995, technological limitations only allowed us to view planets in our own solar system. We couldn't see wobbles caused by an object as small as an exoplanet. However, in 1995, astronomers observed something interesting about the star 51 Peg, 
which is located in the Pegasus constellation, named after a mythical winged horse. The star seemed to be producing light that was changing color periodically, first becoming a little redder, then bluer, then all over again. Astronomers applied a technique called Doppler spectroscopy, which uses both spectroscopy and the Doppler effect to determine that the star was moving in a circle, but they could not find another star near 51 Peg. In addition, the wobble was very small, unlikely to be caused by another star. Something else must be pulling the star in a circle. They concluded that its motion was caused by an exoplanet that we could not directly see. In this animation, the system is drawn to scale. Astronomers had just detected the first planet outside of our solar system using Doppler spectroscopy. Located 50 light years away, the first discovered exoplanet is called 51 Peg B. The planet has size and mass comparable to Jupiter, yet has an orbital period of only 4 days. This means it's about 20 times closer to its star than Earth is to our Sun. If the Sun was at the center of a basketball hoop, and if Earth was at the three-point line, 51 Peg B would just be at the edge of the hoop. Doppler spectroscopy has been used to successfully find about a thousand exoplanets, but it does have some drawbacks. If the orbit isn't edge-on, then the star's motion will be more side-to-side -side instead of to or from you. This makes it hard to calculate an exact mass. In addition, not all orbits are circular, and the less circular it is, the more complex the motion of the star. Finally, this method is best at finding exoplanets with greater masses and shorter periods, making it seem like there are more planets like this than there really are. Nevertheless, improvements in telescope design and data analysis are allowing astronomers to identify planets with smaller masses and longer periods than before. However, we still cannot use Doppler spectroscopy to find an Earth-like planet. In 1999, astronomers discovered the exoplanet HC 209458b using Doppler spectroscopy. Even though this planet was already known, astronomers later successfully confirmed its existence using a new detection technique, the transit method. Sometimes, when we observe the light from a star, we notice that it dims periodically, which can indicate the presence of an orbiting exoplanet. If the planet is directly between us and the star, it will block some of the star's light from us, which will decrease the apparent brightness of the star. If this happens regularly, then this is evidence that something is orbiting the star. For an observer far from the Sun, Jupiter blocks roughly 1% of the Sun's light, and Earth blocks a hundred times less than that. This is like if the Sun's face had the surface area of a basketball court, then Earth covers $3 bills placed on the court. The ratio of the planet and star's radii determine how much light is blocked, and the time between transits is how long the planet takes to orbit. If we know the star's radius, we can also calculate the planet's radius, something we can't do with Doppler spectroscopy. With the right type of measurements, we can even learn what gases make up the planet's atmosphere. There are some complications with this technique, however. Fundamentally, the transit method relies on the rather unlikely event of the planet blocking a bit of the starlight in our direction. If we are looking at the wrong angle, we won't see any transits. We also have to observe multiple periodic transits to confirm that it is in fact a planet, but this takes time. To discover the Earth with transits, aliens would need to be looking at our Sun for over three years. Therefore, this method is biased toward finding bigger planets, which block more of the star's light, and shorter period planets, because they produce periodic dips faster and have a greater chance of crossing our line of sight. In the past 25 years, astronomers have revolutionized our understanding of exoplanets. Let's look at the locations of the exoplanets we found so far. The first exoplanet, 51 Peg B, was discovered in 1995 using Doppler spectroscopy. For a few years after that, 
Doppler spectroscopy was the primary method used to find exoplanets. In 1999, the transit method was successfully used to confirm HD 209458b. Doppler spectroscopy and transits are two complementary techniques that can provide additional information about an exoplanet, not only its existence. Doppler spectroscopy provides mass information, and transits provide radius information. When we combine this data, we can calculate planet density, which can suggest whether the planet is more rocky or more gaseous. There are also many other techniques to detect exoplanets, which can provide their own unique data, but the vast majority of exoplanets have been found with Doppler spectroscopy and transits. In general, exoplanets are common in our galaxy. As of 2021, we have found a total of around 4,500 exoplanets. Furthermore, for a star that is similar to our Sun, it is likely that it hosts an exoplanet of some variety, but the probability that the exoplanet is Earth-like is only about 12%. In 2009, NASA launched the Kepler telescope, which trailed the Earth for nine years, looking for exoplanets, particularly Earth-sized exoplanets. The long-term goal was to collect a large set of data which would allow us to learn how common various planet types are. Kepler found over 2,600 planets using the transit method. It searched for stars in one small region of the sky, divided into 21 tiles. This allowed it to observe longer period planets, enabling Kepler to gain a more representative sample of planets. In 2013, Kepler's primary mission unfortunately ended due to mechanical problems, but astronomers were able to repurpose it to continue the hunt for exoplanets. In 2018, a follow-up mission was launched called TESS, or Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, which is continuing the search for exoplanets using the transit method. TESS is focusing on only the brightest stars which can be followed up with Doppler spectroscopy to measure planet masses. While Kepler observed a fixed section of sky, TESS is surveying almost the entire sky, which is 400 times more area than Kepler's field of view. However, TESS can't look at the entire sky at once, so it divides it into 26 strips and looks at a single strip at a time. Each strip has four sections, which correspond to each of TESS's four cameras. Each strip is viewed for a month, and so only planets with a period of less than 10 days can be detected. However, where these strips overlap, we can detect planets of longer periods. At the pole, all strips come together, so the pole is continually observed. There has always been fascination with the possibility of discovering life on other planets. Life, as we know it, requires liquid water. However, if a planet is too close to its host star, the planet will be too hot for liquid water. Too far, and it will be too cold. Therefore, we are interested in the region around any star where the planet temperature can support liquid water. This is called the habitable zone. In our own solar system, Earth, of course, is in it, but the edges of the zone are fuzzy and up to debate. The brightness of a star is an important factor in determining a planet's temperature, and it affects the location of the habitable zone. Around lower mass stars, the habitable zone will be much closer in, because the star is dimmer. In 2015, Astronomers identified an amazing planetary system orbiting such a star, named TRAPPIST-1. This is what it would look like if the TRAPPIST system was put on top of our system. This system has seven planets orbiting the star, but all of their orbits could easily fit inside Mercury's orbit. In our solar system, these planets would be much too hot to be in our habitable zone. However, because TRAPPIST-1 is much dimmer, its habitable zone is much closer in, 
so some of Trappist's planets are within its habitable zone. Moreover, it is much easier to find habitable Earth-sized planets around smaller stars. Since the star is dimmer, requiring a planet to be in the habitable zone places it closer to the star, resulting in smaller orbital periods, so they transit more often. In addition, a given planet will block more light the smaller the star is, so it produces a larger transit signal. Based on current discoveries, we think that there is roughly one habitable Earth-like planet for every five small stars. In the future, astronomers hope to better understand the planets already detected and search for signs of life using the James Webb Space Telescope. Set to launch in November 2021, this telescope is one of the largest space telescopes yet, and will be able to better characterize exoplanets that TESS first discovered. Astronomers hope to not only find planets with the right temperature to support life, but also to find out if they have the right atmosphere for life. The James Webb Telescope will be controlled from right here in Baltimore, from the Space Telescope Science Institute, located on the Johns Hopkins campus. You don't need to go into space to explore the universe, however, as the Maryland Space Grant Consortium operates a telescope located on the Bloomberg Center on the Hopkins campus, which has public open houses every Friday. This is a great opportunity to pursue your interest in astronomy and to ask all your burning questions. Science needs the next generation of astronomers to improve our understanding of exoplanets and to advance the scientific frontier. Whether you use a fancy telescope or simply your naked eyes, astronomy is about trying to understand our place in the universe, and anyone can be a part of that. So as you turn your eyes to the sky tonight, think about all of those planets waiting to be discovered and the vastness of unexplored space. What will you discover?